All right, now that we've had seen sort of what the difference is between a discrete function and a continuous function, and we've seen a bunch of Mathematica code, the question becomes, what do all of those things do? Well, I am so glad you asked. All right, the plot function, um, we're going to talk about the basics, and then we'll extend a little tiny bit in, but in the basics, some of the key functions are listed here. And the key thing is Mathematica's use of capital letters. You know, this has come up um, over and over again in our discussion of Mathematica functions. And Mathematica, if you want Mathematica to know what you're talking about, it needs to start with a capital letter. And notice plot went from blue to black as soon as I finished it off. But you want your functions really to start with lowercase letters and that will eliminate all confusion between Mathematica and yourself and you won't end up asking Mathematica to do something it already knows how to do and then therefore won't do it. All right, so we called our function displacement and you notice it remembers that it went from blue to black. It's like, ah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And then we need um, a variable. So really down here in the name of the function, that's what we were just talking about. Name your function something which starts with a lowercase letter um, and you won't run into any trouble. And the next thing is let's can take this and let's continue down here under variables. And variables um, are things that you don't necessarily want Mathematica to remember what you're talking about. So we'd like our variable to be time and notice time is blue. Mathematica does not know what time is or um, what we're talking about and that's good because as soon as Mathematica knows something it won't change the value of that something until you tell it to and if we want to use a variety of things in there hence variable we want to make sure that our variables remain blue all right so check plot capitalization is black bingo name of the function lowercase letter and it's black bingo nextly this the range so we want to talk about the range. All right, so we need to put our variable back in, variable back in. And then the next thing that comes in these Mathematica plot functions is a range. Remember, in, in math, the range is the uh, uh, your minimum x value to your maximum x value. All right, so what are we using for x? What we have chosen is to make t our x variable. And sometimes this will get really crazy because when displacement in physics is actually the variable x and we want that to be on the y axis so things get a little hairy in there but let's just remember that in Mathematica when we want the range the range is the x axis that's the horizontal axis and the um, this next chunk of information here that's going to come out to this comma is going to be uh, what we want the minimum range value to be and we want the maximum range value to be when you give Mathematica a list it has to start with curly brackets so curly brackets Mathematica is big on redundancy, so Mathematica wants you to know that it knows that you know what your variable is. Well, we know we wanted our variable to be t, so we're going to put a t in there. And then what we want to double check for as human beings is that the blue variable here, t, check, matches the blue variable here, t, check. Lovely. All right, and we, what do we want our minimum x value to be? Well, it doesn't make any sense to start anywhere other than zero, though sometimes it might, but 99 times out of 99 and a half, we're gonna start at zero um, for our minimum value. And then where do we wanna end? And Mathematica doesn't care where we end, we get to end at 10 billion for all it cares, but to match the previous examples, we want to end at 10, and we're done giving it commands, so we're gonna close it, and notice, that the purple bracket here went to a black bracket as soon as I closed the other end of the bracket. But if we look all the way back here to the left, Mathematica is still going, excuse me, excuse me, you've forgotten something. And it's true, we have. It's got a purple bracket over there, and we need to end our bracket, and we'll end it. And now, the last check. Capital P, check. Black plot, black plot. Lowercase d, black displacement, check. Blue variables, check. Our variables are still blue, and we have no purple brackets. No purple brackets. So this should work. Let's find out. Huzzah! It worked, just like we knew it would, because the things that were black were black, and the things that were blue were blue. And actually, if you lean in really close, you'll notice that this is a slightly subtle, different shade of blue. Some of you might say that's more of a teal, but let's not split hairs here, but it is a subtly different color. And that's the other thing you want to check for. This color and this color should match. Similarly, if you think back to when we were talking about solve functions, 
that the again that subtle color shift needed to match the thing we were looking for needed to match the variable we were telling Mathematica about 